everybody, welcome to Share the Month and happy March. I am still celebrating the release of my brand new CD, Unscripted, with Corey Pesatoro, three-time world accordion champion. And I thought this month I'd show you another tune from the album. Um, one of my favorite tracks on the whole CD, we do this set of like kitchen party, uh, Kaylee style French Canadian tunes. And it's super traditional with like the whole violin and the accordion. And in, in fact, it might be the most traditional thing we do on the entire album. I'll let you guys be the judge of that, but certainly in the running. Um, and we start the set off with this absolutely adorable, hilarious little clog that I found in the uh, Don Messer anthology. Which, by the way, if you're a fan of French Canadian or maritime style tunes, that's a great book to have. So many good tunes. So in it, this clog is identified simply as the clog in C, written by traditional, which is to say we have no idea what this thing is called. <laughs> so at least Don Messer Anthology has no idea what it's called, and neither do I. As always, if one of you out there happens to know a name or even better, a composer associated with this tune, please let me know because I'm dying to know. But for now, the clog in C. One, two, three. <laughs> I know I can't hear it without, uh, you know, cracking a grin. Uh, but yeah, if you're just listening, I'll see you next month. And if you're here to learn, grab your instruments. Let's do it. All right. So uh, thanks to this title that isn't a title at all, I don't need to tell you that this thing is in C major. And uh, yeah, you can hear there's a lot of arpeggiation in there. It follows a lot of the same patterns as um, clogs that we've done on past tunes of the month. So let's check it out. I'm going to slow that A section down. Here it is. Little pickup. <laughs> perform, you're probably really excited to hear that this is a classic, no exceptions, no funny business, part one, part two, part one, end it kind of tune. What a relief, right? After the past few months, we've had all these tunes with weird exceptions and things like that. This is just straightforward, wonderful, danceable tune. All right, so let's take a look at it. Part one with the pickup. <laughs> that little pickup is a chromatic. It's chromatic through my second finger. You could also play it just as a two note pickup, right? Without the extra high second finger. I kind of like the playfulness that the triplet chromatic gives. So I'm going to teach it with that in, but you can totally take it out if you'd like it to be a little more straight laced. All right, so after my pickup, what I have here is a C major arpeggio. But it's kind of odd, isn't it? It's in second inversion, actually, because the G's on the bottom. And the trick for this is that I have my fingers glued on every string. When I put down that third finger on my G string, I leave it there. Second finger on the A string, I leave it there. And then my open A string, you can see it here that my fingers are glued across the fingerboard. And that's the key to any of these arpeggiated clogs, because now 
I just move my bow back and forth across the strings. I don't have to pick my fingers up. Watch what happens if I don't glue my fingers. It's already difficult to play and confusing and much harder to play in tune. Gosh, this guy is tricky to play in tune to begin with. Why would I pick my fingers up and then have to find it again? Ugh, sounds like too much work to me. So glue across. C major, glue across. Now a D minor arpeggio. This is also a second inversion. And it is also a glue across. When you put down your third finger, leave it there. Because you're coming right back to it. Let's put all that together. Part one with a chromatic triplet pickup. Glue your C major. Glue your D minor. Yeah, do it one more time. Chromatic triplet pickup. D minor. Good, that's part one. If you need to do that a couple more times, just go ahead and rewind the video. I'll be there to help you do it a couple more times. But here's part two I'm going on to. It also starts with a chromatic triplet pickup. This one is descending. Yeah, so this chromatic is also through my second finger and then just goes up the scale. But I've glued that third finger down. Did you see I didn't pick it up? Arpeggio. Do that much again. Chromatic triplet pickup. Up the scale. Glue your third finger because you're coming right back. And now we got to land back in C major. And that's one of my favorite reoccurring patterns in fiddle music. I call it Frere Jaca or Are You Sleeping? Are You Sleeping? We all know that song, right? Um, from your childhood, perhaps. Uh, Frere Jaca. And I land over there where I started. And that's all part two. Let's put it together. Chromatic triplet pickup descending. Off the scale, glue your third. Frere Jaca. Frere Jaca land. Yeah, let's do it one more time, part two. Chromatic triplet pickup descending. All right, and now we're back to part one, chromatic triplet pickup, ascending. C major glue. D minor glue. Here's the ending, it should sound familiar. So if that ending sounded suspiciously like part two, you're right. It's all the same up to the Frere Jaca, right? Up the scale, blue. Now instead of playing Frere Jaca, we're just going to do a clog ending. Root, third root, that happens in clogs all the time. And I'm decorating the first one with a little roll. Right? If you're new to rolls, check out some past tune of the months. I show you exactly how to do them, but quickly a roll is an ornament in your left hand where you take the pitch you're going to ornament, you go pitch, you play a note above, you go back to the pitch, note below, and you return to the pitch. Right? Pitch above, pitch below, pitch. But it happens really fast. Sometimes you barely even hear it. You just hear like a little disturbance in the force that tells your listeners that you have rolled. All right, well, that's the whole A section. Should we put it together? Go to the beginning. Start with a chromatic triplet pickup. A sent. Part one. C major, glue across. D minor. Here's part two, chromatic triplet pickup. Up the scale. Ferro Jaca. Chromatic triplet pickup. Part one. Part two. Oh, sorry. Ending. Let's do it again. I won't call the wrong thing. Part one. Part 
part two. Back to part one. And that's the whole A section. Yeah, I made a classic mistake um, that probably all of you have made too. When you have a tune that part two and the ending are very similar, it's nice because you don't have to learn anything new, but it also means you have to keep really good track of which one it is. So that way the section ends on time. If you keep going back to part two, part two, you get kind of the section that doesn't end. So keep track like I did not. Excellent. All right. Obviously any parts of that that you'd like to do again, just rewind the video. But I'm going to go on to the B section and play it slowly. And if you're listening with your Tune of the Month brain, you know <clears throat> to listen for anything that might be familiar from the A section, making a reappearance. Hmm. I'm sure you could tell from my making incredibly obvious faces. There's some stuff from the A section hanging out in there. But let's start with part one of the B section, which is new material. I have a little pickup. This pickup is a roll, right? But I'm doing it quickly. And that's basically just a decorated say, uh, C major arpeggio. This is the decoration and then normal arpeggio. Decorated with a roll. Same roll pickup. And now, down the scale into a D minor arpeggio. D minor. Yeah, and that's all part one. C major, D minor. Start with the pickup roll. C major. Pickup roll. D minor. That's it, do it one more time. Now here's where it should get familiar. We use the same part two as the A section. Back to the same part one you already know. Roll pick up. Roll pick up D minor. section to the B section and the same ending from the A section to the B section. I call that having a cloud ending or a cloud uh, part two. Cloud basically means it's the same for both sections um, and it's a nice freebie. So that's the whole tune that you've got. All right, so you could just play it right like that and have a grand old time, but because there's not that much going on that's new material in the B section, having a couple tricks that can create some variation in this be a great idea. And this is where we start using one of my favorite variation tools. I call it the fill-in triplet. Now we've looked at this in past tunes of the month uh, when we've done clogs a little bit, but let's see how it applies here to the clog in C. I'm going to go back to the beginning and I have my chromatic triplet pick up. Now how about this? minor chord. If I do it without the pickup, uh, the triplet, 
but with the fill-in. And the reason I call it a fill-in is because these two notes, that's a skip, right? So I could take that duple of a skip and fill in whatever note is extra that I skipped over and turn it into a triplet. There's a little more motion, right? I'll keep going. Here's my chromatic triplet pickup. Oh, there's a good one, right? So I did that on Frere Jaca. Now this is an interesting one because that's not a skip, right? Those two are a step. They're normal, like there should be no room in there. So what I actually fill in is chromatic. See how I did that? So that's the rule. If it's a skip, you'll fill in a diatonic note. If it's a step that you're trying to ornament, fill in a chromatic note. All right, I'll keep going back to part one. Fill it in. Part two, uh, this is the ending. And nothing to fill in there because the clog ending we leave alone. We need that to be recognizable. Let's do the whole A section. Just those two little fill ins, they make such a difference, don't they? Pick up. Fill it in. Pick up. Fill it in. Fill it in. Already it makes a big difference, at least to my ears. And you can even play around with doing just one of those rather than both and it will give you a different balance of intricate, mischievous, versus stately and simple and playful um, of the bass melody. All right, well, let's look at the B section. Are there some to be added there? I bet you so. Okay, so I don't really feel the need to fill either of those in because that's new material from the A section, right? That part one. But if you must, I would do that one chromatic, right? And that's actually kind of cute because that chromatic descending um, kind of heightens the falling sensation, yeah, da, 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 like the Looney Tunes falling off a cliff. already heard. What if I wanted to really go overboard? <laughs> That's a lot, isn't it? Well, if you want it, you can do it. I'm doing a fully chromatic scale. <laughs> That's a lot. I would never do more than that, and I would only do that once, but if you really, really, really want to be mischievous, that's a good way to do it. Back to part one. Let's go overboard. <laughs> that's definitely more triplets than I played on the recording of Unscripted, because I was trying to keep it simple. Again, when we played it, uh, Corey and I, on our album, it was the first tune in a big long set. We had a lot of things to build later. So I purposely kept that clog pretty darn honest to the melody. I did a couple little triplets, but I didn't feel it needed much. If you were going to develop the clog itself more, yeah, use those triplet fill-ins and see how many you can pack in before it becomes tasteless. <laughs> Taste being in the eye of the beholder here. But definitely, you want to structure your uh, evolution of the tune so you start with the simplest possible version. And when you get to the ridiculous, like the full chromatic scales, um, save that for the very last time you play through the tune. And don't repeat it. It's like the magician's principle of their tricks, right? When a magician has a really great trick, they never do it twice. They only do it once because otherwise, somebody might start figuring out how they did it. And you certainly can't have that. Hit it once and get out of there. 
All right, so this is a fun idea to play with. I hope it uh, helps you have a lot of fun with this tune and also any other clogs you know. As always, if you'd like to see sheet music for the clog in C, uh, well, get the Don Messer collection, obviously, but if you want it even faster than that and in totally illegible handwriting belonging to me, you can go to my website, www.mariblack.com and sign up for my monthly email newsletter. Every month when I send out my email, I will include uh, my handwritten sheet music for that month's tune of the month. And so if you're already subscribed, you already have Clog and C sitting in your inbox. And if you're new to the newsletter, you'll have all future tunes of the month coming to you later on. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. I hope you have fun with this, and I will look forward to seeing you out there in the real world for some tunes, and or right back here next month for more tunes here. Bye.